Good morning, everybody. And uh, Good thank morning. you for day two of the um, five day um, marketing challenge. Uh, I know it's a lot of work in five days, but um, at the end of five days, you can probably go back to the um, calls or the videos and take a look at them and say, okay, what areas do I still need to approve upon? Because the client um, or avatar um, profile is an ongoing process. It doesn't really end after you only got one line in there. You just keep adding to it until it becomes very clear. And you can tell, like I was saying, um, once you do that, um, I've got to say that once you complete that exercise, I pretty much gar guarantee you 48 hours after you will get a client with that profile that you created. And then if you got them and it's not somebody you want to work with, then you know you have to go back to your profile and do some editing. <laughs> so, but anyway, that, that's, I think it's quite cool. And then that way you get to practice and keep rolling along with that. So today I want to talk about, um, it's, it's what, we're going to work on the what today. So what, um, I sent you a couple of examples of um, journeys that your client may take with you. Um, the one that I designed for this class is William. William is a guy who's an artist. He really would like to spend his whole time doing creating artwork. He doesn't want to do any marketing. He doesn't want to hire a broker or artist a broker because he thinks they're too expensive and all they do is cause him to fail. And um, he doesn't want to pay their fees. So he has to learn how to do his own thing. So what is it? I wanted William, like anybody else that signed up for this class, I wanted you to uh, come and sign up for the class. So that was the journey of William to say, I'm struggling. Um, I don't want to pay somebody else, but I do want to learn. And it's a good idea to learn anyway, because then you understand your client, you're, you're going to understand what they want from you. And what you're willing to offer you may not be able to be willing to offer like cozy's doing handmade crafts well if they said to her well we want uh can you go to the store and buy us a t-shirt and print this she may say no i don't do that i only make handmade crafts so that would be a not a match for a client for her so um so basically that's um that's what the who is about. And now the what is, is what journey is your customer going to, how do they find you? And then once you get them, what are you going to do to have them uh, work with you or hire you or buy from you? So um, I thought we'd just talk a bit about, um, we'll go to, you can go find your tribe on Facebook groups. You can Google, like Google. Um, so let's maybe, I'll do a screen share and we can kind of go to, um, we'll go to my screen share here and there we go. So as you can see, it's kind of busy, but anyway, um, we don't want this. I was, I was doing some work <laughs> before. So let's to go to, um, we'll just click you window and let's go to um, Facebook, for example. Um, I don't know how you do this. Yes, I'm not very well set up here. Um, Let's go file, new window, there we go. And we're going to go, I'm going to move this bar down below if I can. There we go. And we're going to go to Facebook. And so what groups would you find your, your customers at or what kind of groups would you go to? So, um, Rio or Chosy, what would you like to do? Welcome, Lisa. Um, so, well, oh, I, just was gonna say, I think 
for my particular customer, I don't think that I would necessarily find them on maybe Facebook groups, but if I were to go, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, um, maybe like on uh, TikTok or Instagram or maybe even Snapchat, like those platforms is probably where I would find them. I don't think I would necessarily find them on Facebook groups um, just because the demographic probably tends to lean more uh, on that platform. Okay. So um, just for exercise purposes, that's, uh, do you have any fashion groups that you go to or you have? Um, yeah, some like, that I use to keep up with what's going on uh, in the industry. Do you want to use that as an example? Well, just, um, let's just, um, okay, let's just Google fashion. What kind of fashions are they? Do you want to call them ladies fashion? Yeah, we could, we could try ladies fashion. Okay. I know like um, if, if you can't find anything for that one in particular, I know like there is a particular niche of women that are like into homemaker type of mm -hmm. fashion. So, uh, okay. So there's, sense, but. okay. So what you want to do is come up with 10 categories um, under Google. We're just doing Google right now. So ladies fashion. So these are the people that are coming up with ladies fashions, right? So I noticed most of them are stores probably not really up your thing. So you need to fine tune it. So we might go to um, what we were saying, ladies fashions is um, homemakers. So you see somebody shopping for dresses. So um, designer clothes. So there's still kind of thing, but the idea is, if there's a 46 best housewife outfit ideas, it's on Pinterest. So she, she's, um, she's making um, her own thing and she's posting about it, right? So um, if you see something like this, you might pin it, you might like it or just make a note of it. Oh, okay. She's designing things. Okay, she has a website. Let me go to her website and check it out. She has 7.46 followers. So you might find something like that. So the idea is to take um, a look at all these. You know, um, I was shocked by this, but small businesses hang out on Facebook. I would think that they would be, it depends, I guess, your category, but... Um, so they wouldn't they would be besides Facebook, they'd be on Pinterest and Instagram, like you were saying, um, and that type of thing. Um, I would like to also maybe suggest that she could look at like local designers in yeah. her area because that's a good one to go to because everybody's trying to get their stuff out. So look yeah. at local designers as well. Yeah. So here's, we're on Instagram. We're on my account, but, um, so, it, you know, you, you could go to all these groups. Um, the idea of what I'm asking you to do is do that is go find them and see what questions they're asking, see what, um, things they're interested in knowing more information about, and that'll help you come up with, um, besides the products that you are making, but what kind of things do they ask you? Like, am I, I'm looking for this kind of design. Do you make this kind of design? And so with the groups and things, the idea is to, uh, for the groups is that um, like Scora, you can go to Scora and ask a question and, and uh, say, I make, uh, if you were having a handmade item or designer, uh, what kind of things are of interest to you? And they can answer you. And then if they answer you, you know that there is an interest, right? But if there's no answer, you might have to rethink about, okay, what am I offering? What do people want? Because it it's really easy to say, I'm making this and I'm selling it. Okay, now you have to go find the customer rather than 
doing some research to find the customer to see what they're interested in so you can sell that. And then later you can offer your own design. So that's just, um, it's just some of the things that, um, that are important. So chat. Yeah. So, you know, just, um, help each other out here. Um, so that was, that was, it's just kind of my thing is that, um, take a, take a look, I guess I have to stop share, uh, stop share. There we go. Um, so the idea is to take a look at other groups where you're going to find your customer. So you're looking for your customer. So if she's a spiritual woman, where does she hang out? And go find out where she is and what kind of questions she has. And are you willing to provide that kind of service? So you want to make sure your what is, um, what are you offering? And are they really interested in what you're offering? rather than trying to create a product like for example um you know i might be interested in just doing lots of training for small businesses but they may not be interested in the topics i'm offering so i have to stop and think okay what kind of services or information do they want to know about to offer that rather than what i want to offer so this is something to think about so your what is what um, journey does your customer have to do to come work with you so what do you do right now to get them to buy from you anybody have any suggest any uh, things that they do no okay well i'm not in the in i'm not currently in the stage of selling but i guess if i were uh, in that process right now, I think I would try to find, you know, utilize uh, ad, uh, what is it, using ads to kind of get people's attention to kind of uh, get people to know more about my brand initially before I even start selling. So I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, okay, so do you have a newsletter? Do you, are you starting a newsletter to collect emails? Because yeah, money, I would definitely because uh, the money is in your list. It's not in whatever you think it is. It's not in selling your product. You have to start somewhere. So start with creating a newsletter. So what you want to do is provide maybe um, a checklist, uh, a, a PDF about or an ebook or something that maybe you can create. You can really easily do that. Or if you want to do webinars you want to offer something that is a, get them to come to your webinar, learn how to do this, or maybe it's just a class, learn how to, um, there was a gal yesterday was on the call and um, was, you know, helping girls, young girls uh, with their manners and etiquette. So she could probably come up with a checklist of things that they need to consider doing. And if they don't know how to do it, then, they can come next time to buy her her um, her workshop. One of the things that I do to pull in the girls is I host a once a year pageant. Mm -hmm. And so the girls come to the pageant. They do have um, like six weeks of training before. Then we have a full-fledged pageant. And then after that, um, we do the etiquette classes. So that's how I've been um i tried it out and it worked mm -hmm. um trying to get the girls into the etiquette classes and hosting the pageant is a good way to pull them in for myself right so do you start with the pageant first or the manners first pageant first okay okay yeah so it's a great idea so you have this um is it like a contest or just an event that you can um, they add their name to the list and they sign up for to be in the pageant? No, they it's a contest, but what's different with the pageant, everybody gets a crown and sash. That way I don't, um, you know, leave anybody out. And so by everybody getting a crown and sash, I've gotten the, all the girls that are running, if it's 10 or 15 girls, all of them join the etiquette classes after they get their crowns and sashes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Great. Great idea. So how, how often do you do that? 
The pageant is once a year. Oh, okay. Okay. So do you get enough clients out of that pageant to hold you for a year? What else do you do? Then um, we work and like I go out and network within the community. Mm -hmm. And so when I find different organizations that are in need of volunteers, mm -hmm. that's what keeps the girls busy and um, keep them actively involved in the etiquette classes as well. Because you need to know how to act, walk, talk, speak before you go out. And so that's where the classes are a benefit. And then what they learn, they get to go out into the community and use it. So they right. don't get it. Right, right. Yeah. No, that's great. You sounds like you really have a, a well developed program already, like how to get them in the door and how you continue to work with them on an ongoing basis. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So what else? You don't have to call me, ma'am. <laughs> it's just oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a habit. You know, I get guys say, yes, ma'am. Oh, no, I'm not a ma'am. Just call me. <laughs> but yeah, Um. so I love your idea, Lisa. And so uh, do you work with other nonprofits to do other pageants or, or is this just your thing? This is just my thing. Okay. Have you considered working with other nonprofits to uh, that work with youth to have their own pageant? And then you get those clients. I thought about it, but my pageant, again, is a little bit differently. Um, a lot of pageants are into like the bathing suits and um, they uh, have a lot of contestants, but only one or two contestants get a crown. And then the other girls have paid all their money to run and they walk away with nothing. And right. I think that's hard on your self-esteem to put that kind of effort and energy into running and then you go home with nothing so that's what's different and sets my pageant uh different from the other ones because everybody gets a crown and sash with me right right but what i'm thinking is that you could create a program that you could get into other nonprofits or other not even nonprofits, other companies that you know work with children and um they need to get their manners done, right? So you can just maybe run the program with them, partner with them. That's I what I'm am. saying. Collaborate with them. And thank you for that. It has crossed my mind. And where I would go with that would be the daycare centers that have school-age children. Right. A lot of kids are in daycare like this summertime. So a lot of them are in there all day. So mm -hmm. by partnering up with, the daycare centers that have school age children, um, that's a niche that I'm looking at uh, and looking into uh, to grow the pageant as well. Right, right. No, I think it's a great idea. And um, you can keep expanding that so that you always have people that their parents, like you're saying, the mothers and the child and the girl will come up and sign up and do a, a class with you, whatever your class is about at that time, right? Yes. Yeah. Great. Great idea. So you also have a uh, newsletter, Lisa? I do way? not. Okay. So I would suggest that you um, start creating your newsletter because you already have people just ask them if they, if um, you can add them to your newsletter and you just add them. And then, um, so the platform you would use for that would be a third party, like, um, there's constant contact, there's um, Mailer Light, there's um, MailChimp. I wouldn't recommend MailChimp. MailChimp is more advanced, but I could come up with a list and send them out to you and um, just get a free account. And then um, from there, um, you would start working out, sending out a newsletter once a month or maybe every, you know, every two weeks. It depends, but at least that once a month. Great. That would be greatly appreciated. Yeah. And then from there, you know, you're, you want to stay in touch with all the people that have taken a class with you. Right. And then you yeah. want to be able to ask them to give you referrals. Right. You've uh, taken yeah. a class, you know, you've had the great experience. Could you please refer? And then maybe there's a prize for, um, you know, referring. You can either some. Some people usually pay out money, but instead for the girls, maybe you give them another class or maybe you give them, let them audit a class or maybe you find something, a separate class just for them. 
okay. when they refer. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, so that was the, um, I would highly recommend it. Anybody that's in the class today is setting up a newsletter, an opt-in, even if you just uh, create a little tip. Because uh, if to get their emails, you have to give them something. So what value can you give them for them to want to opt into your newsletter? So it might be um, just a checklist. It might be a tip book. It may be um, a video recording that you're teaching a class and you send out to them. Um, it might be, um, I guess Sandy dropped out. Um, it might be, um, you know, it could be anything. It, it's a free offer that you're offering somebody to opt in into your newsletter. Okay, so, um, so that's your what? How, how, how do they work with you? How can you start building a client list, or not even a client list at this point in time? Right now, it's just about building a list of people that are interested in what you have to offer. They're interested and they like your value that you offered, so they're gonna jump in on your list and see what else you're offering. Because you really have to reach out to people about six or seven times before they really start wanting to uh, buy from you, unless it's something they really wanted at that time because you spoke to them before or that they heard about you or a friend referred you them to you or something like that. So until that happens, um, you have to keep being in service and offering uh, value to them. Like for... Um, and then you want to keep sending them emails. Um, so some of the ideas about, um, uh, you know, you have to have some sort of um, email. I'm, I'll send you some um, emails you can start sending out to your people so that they get to know you as a person, not just what the business that you do. Like you tell them like who you are, what lessons you've learned, how did you get into doing what you're doing? Um, share that a bit with your customers and be vulnerable because you know people are always interested in other people about how they got to where they are, right? And uh, that type of thing. Uh, so that's, uh, it's anything to do about what, what are you doing to attract your clients? So one, you, we yesterday is the ideal avatar client. So you have to figure out that when you got that figured out, that's an attraction factor. And then number two is what? What are you doing to get them to sign up on your list? And um, I don't usually get into this part of it, but I also recommend um, you have a blog. You can do a newsletter and then, uh, or you can do a blog post and people you send them their blog posts. That's another one too. I always think a blog is a client magnet. So the more content you share about your expertise or events that are happening in your community or things that you're involved with in the community, then you're going to have more people want to say, I want to jump in and know more about them. Um, also, another one is about networking, getting out there and networking with your community, like um, Chamber of Commerce is always have networking events going on. So you can go and join them and go meet your local community, find out who they are and um, see who would be interested in your product or service. Find out what they would be interested in and make a note of it. And you might find people you could collaborate with as well. Like if you are making handmade goods, uh, Bria, maybe Chosie and you could get together because she's making handmade bags. So maybe there's some sort of collaboration that could happen there between the, maybe you'll discover you have the same client base. So that was the other thing, find people that have similar or same client bases as you and collaborate with each other. And that's how you'll also grow your business. So think about all the, the what's, what can you do to attract more people to you? So that's lesson number two today is uh, figuring out and where to find them. Because I know one of the girls asked me yesterday um, where to find them. 
Um, so like I said, you're going to search your Facebook groups and find out who are doing their certain handmade goods, designer clothes, classes, things that you're, you want to offer in your services of value. So you want to find these groups and when you want to join them, and then you, you don't want to be selling any of your products at this point in time. All you want to do is engage with them, answer questions, ask questions, and let people get to know you. And then that's another way of getting people to want to come see what, what's going on with your you and your business and what you're offering. Um, same with thing with um, if you Google, uh, find the 10, top 10 things on Google that you're interested in. Who's your customer? Find out um, who they are. Um, another one is called uh, wordtracker.com. They allow you, um, I think, eight to 10 free searches um, on there. So you could go on there and just put in a couple of words or your client profile or something and find out how many people are actually searching for their keywords. So your keyword would be what um, business handmade goods. Okay, find out how many are searching for that. And that'll also help you when you're online, doing your online marketing. Um, Quora. Quora is, is uh, a QA and a uh, discussion platform. You could go in there and ask a question, see how many re people respond to your question and uh, kind of thing, go on like that as well. Um, so that's basically uh, your homework is to really just find out um, what you can you do. Do you want to get started a, a newsletter? What um, are you going to offer for that email? for that person to give them their your email. So I'll, I'll send you a list of possible places you could go and get a free account and um, then think about what you're going to offer for them to exchange their email with your offer. Any questions? No, um, no. No, I found this class very helpful. I have no questions at this time. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's kind of your homework for today is think about the what. How can I get people to check me out? How can I get people to sign up for my newsletter? Um, you know, just start with the newsletter. You don't even need a website or anything right now at this point in time. You just... You need something really simple you can get started with before it gets so overwhelming and confusing. And then you're going, what? I can't keep up with all this. Cause so you want to be sure that you just start, if you're just starting out, make it simple, but make it very clear. So people understand you want them to come to you for some, whatever it is that you want them to look for you for. Okay. I think that's it. Any questions? There's no questions. Nobody wants to be on the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> like I Lisa was. Know, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, when? When? When are you going to do all of this? So anyway, we'll talk to you all tomorrow. Thanks very much for joining us back, back again today. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Have Thank a good you. day, everyone. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you.